Yes, Mercedes off the pace on Friday in Baku, Red Bull right there. Ferrari very quick too, but the big question, I think, from today was why did Charles Leclerc make another of what is becoming a sort of trademark mistake of his? Think back to Baku in 2019 when he looked really good on Friday and potentially could have won that Grand Prix, but it all went wrong for him on Saturday morning when he locked up going into a tight left-hander. I think the same corner he went off today. Um, approach with a slight uh, rise in, in the track. And instead of going down the escape road, brake too late, locked up, went into the Tech Pro barrier and kind of lost momentum, lost the weekend. That's quite a big shunt. Um, and I spoke to him. I remember speaking to him about a month after that, when the dust had settled, just to see what his thoughts were. And he said, yeah, yeah, locked up. And the problem was he couldn't see the front tires at that position, breaking for that corner, I was to do with the sun, the light, plus the slight incline, he couldn't see that he locked up. And I said to him, as you would, I think, but couldn't you feel you locked up? And he said, no, I couldn't feel it at all. Which I thought was kind of strange, but I just filed it away under the heading of modern Formula One, you can't feel lockups particularly well. Um, but then we had the incident at Monaco, where it's very clear now that the reason they didn't change the left rear drive shaft uh, is because they thought all the damage was on the right, which is the side that hit the wall. They didn't know that Charles had hit the guardrail on the left, and that was what had pushed him into that apex far too tightly. And the reason they didn't know that is because obviously Charles didn't tell them. And the reason Charles didn't tell them, I'm guessing here, and putting two and two together, maybe getting five, is that he didn't feel it. Uh, <laughs> And then we move on to today, Friday in Baku, where he has the same incident, basically, as he had in 2019. Lots of drivers today locking up, going into that left hand, and in other corners as well, turn two particularly. But there's lots of runoff area there. And you make a decision as the front right, it's usually the front right, oddly, that locks there, um, that you either stick with it or you go down the escape road, big escape road. And everybody else went down the escape road, except Charles, who did exactly the same thing and just plowed straight onto the tech pro barrier. Didn't do a lot of damage took the nose off the car, he came back, uh, got back to the pits, drove it back to the pits and got out again, did a run. But there's three weird things there that make you think, wow, this is, a, this is, this is Charles, this is a different Charles. I mean, I, in my mind, as you probably know, I put Charles right up there in terms of technique and feel, feel, well, let's put feel to one side, technique with Max and Lewis. Now, obviously Lewis is, I think Lewis ticks all the boxes really. Um, very few he doesn't take. Max, maybe there's still a couple, uh, and Charles, um, probably more than that. But in terms of one lap pace, fabulous to watch and drives beautifully, lovely soft edges. But he does have this thing now, doesn't he? And, and I'm wondering whether it's this great unknown of emotion that comes into it and, and whether or not um, he, he is for sure an emotional driver and whether or not that is clouding some of the things that are more native raw, dare I say, less intelligent, emotionally intelligent driver would, would feel. I don't know. You know, it's, I think it's watch this space because it was a really, really strange thing to see Charles do that again at a, at a, at a track, which obviously means a lot to him because this was where he raced just a few days after he lost his father in uh, Formula 2 or GP2, I think it probably was then, uh, and won, and won the feature race and nearly won the sprint race as well. An amazing thing given what he was going through. And, and it was obviously here in 19 that he could have won. So, and he's had the Monaco thing, so he's coming here and he was, and when he went off, when he went into the tape pro barrier, he was purple in sector one. Uh, Carlos had just gone quickest of all. And so again, it was sort of, you know, emotions getting into it. And he just did this weird thing. I don't know. Tomorrow's another day, of course. And that's what I guess his management will be saying to him. Um, but I wonder whether they'll be saying, look, we need to rethink the way you go about this. There's the Jackie Stewart, deflating balloon, get rid of all emotions before you get in the car. And then there's the other thing, you know, emotion is good for adrenaline, maybe, and a few other things. So it'd be interesting to see how it develops. Uh, overall, a very, very good day for Red Bull Honda. Quick uh, with no fuel, uh, quick with fuel, 
using the red tire in the afternoon. I talk a lot on this Friday video about the fuel run on, on back end of FP2 because that is the significant thing as we go towards the weekend. It's a better pointer, I think, particularly on a circuit where there's a lot of traffic. There was a bit of crosswind, a bit of, a bit of stuff going on, lots of incidents, lots of yellows and, and uh, virtual safety cars going on. Um, I think to see what they were doing in some sort of medium long run with fuel on board was the most significant thing. But on the empty fuel, Red Bull ready quick, Ferrari ready quick. Uh, but then we saw when they put fuel in the Ferrari that they were eating up their rear tires a lot more than Red Bull. And that is something that obviously will be getting their attention overnight. As for Mercedes, not quick at all without fuel. And, and Lewis he had a few interrupted laps. There were a couple of laps where he was purple, purple, and then a yellow came out. So, I, you know, I think it's, 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 I know they're saying the car was not good on, on light fuel. I think we need to see what happens as the track picks up grip and when Lewis gets in a proper lap with no interruptions, no traffic, no yellows, just to see where they really are. I, I don't think they're as far away as they probably are suggesting at the moment. So let's have a look. I mean, Sergio Perez, uh, very, very good all day, very good on light fuel, very good on uh, heavy fuel. He was first out on the track and came in, got everything done, really in sync with everything, apart from when he came in at the garage at the wrong angle right at the end. Uh, but 46.5 with fuel on board, soft tire, and by the end of a long 10 lap run, 46.8, really impressive. I mean, Ferrari would love that. And uh, Max Verstappen just a shade behind on everything, 46.7. So if this is gonna be a weekend of managing the rears, of looking after the graining, trying to prevent the graining, that's certainly something that happened to Ferrari today, then welcome Sergio Perez to your sweet spot because that is what you are on this earth to do, isn't it? You drive so well with the back of the car. And it's not just, tire management, which is an easy way of explaining that Sergio is very good. What it means is he's got this incredible feel in terms of how much he can load the loaded rear and he never puts more throttle on the car than the car can take. That's why you very rarely see Sergio doing one of these even. You see Max doing them today, but Sergio, he looks on rails when he's in sync with what's happening and he's got a reasonable turn in. And uh, yeah, really good to see Sergio driving that well. And, and seeing that part of his vernacular being rewarded by a circuit like this. And I tell you, there's one other aspect about Baku that works for Sergio, and that, is, that are the undulations you get, particularly in sector two, where you can use the change in elevation in undulation just to get the car balanced in a way you want to get it right if it's not absolutely perfect. And that's something that Sergio also does very, very well. He uses undulations very well. So yeah, he looked very good. Max Verstappen was a couple of tenths away, I would say, light and heavy fuel, and didn't appear to have a great run in terms of traffic and yellows. He was on the radio a lot. Didn't seem to have a happy day with, um, a lot of drivers didn't seem to have a happy day with Nikita Mazepin, but, um, Ma but the two Red Bulls really quick. A comparison, so remember Sergio 46.5 with fuel, 46.5, 46.8. Lewis Hamilton with fuel, 46.8, but he's on the medium tire. They're probably on the medium tire because they think the soft tire isn't gonna last anything like as long as the medium, but nonetheless, 46.8. So they're not that far away. And if you factor in soft to medium, maybe they're right there. So Mercedes, not as, not as far away as I think they're suggesting. Valtteri Bottas, 47s though. He seemed to be completely lost today. Wasn't quick in either light fuel or heavy fuel form. But Lewis, as I say, just about there. I compare that with the Ferraris now. Um, Carlos Sainz looked consistently good all day, as he did at Monaco. He's got into this groove. He looks really nice in the car. A couple of moments when he went down the escape road, but then, you know, they all do that. But he's doing, um, he's doing 47s and 48s. So that is the difference. You're looking at about a second a lap between Red Bull and Ferrari with fuel on board around a long lap. Remember, 147 is a long, long lap. And there's a big gap between the fuel load cars and light fuel as well, but that's standard, standard isn't it? Because it's a long lap and a lot of corners. Um, and Charles Leclerc, uh, 46 is on mediums, but he was on the mediums, Carlos was on the soft tire. Uh, but Charles Leclerc was on the medium and like, like Mercedes, but they went away and he's doing 49s by the end of his run and complaining that he just could barely drive the car. So that is the problem that Ferrari have got. Always good to look at what Lando Norris is doing. He 40, he's basically doing Carlos Sainz times, 47.3. Um, 47.5, but he was on the medium rather than soft, so that's good for McLaren. And Daniel Ricciardo is sort of three or four tenths away from Lando, so both McLarens looking pretty good as well. So um, 
Yeah, an interesting day. For me, the most significant thing was to see Charles Leclerc doing that again. I mean, I, that, you just don't see that sort of thing very often. When you've got an escape road twice now, 2019 and now this year, he's just gone into the barrier. And literally, you know, the minute the track reopened, somebody else had the same problems, went straight down the escape road, no problem at all. So Charles, I think, will be... I don't know what he'll be doing, but um, he'll be hopefully digging a bit deeper. And I guess what he should be doing, what he should be. I asked Jackie Stewart once how he got into this whole deflating balloon, get rid of all the emotion from your body so that you're just this, this, um, this mass of nerve endings sitting in the car with no thought process, just reacting to what the car is doing. That's what he wanted to achieve. And I asked how he got to that stage. And he said, oh, I always read, uh, I used to read novels, you know. And I said, well, what novels? Because, you know, some novels can be quite sort of demanding. Oh, Alistair McLean, he said, or Hammond Innes. Scottish, Scots uh, novels, very light novels. And of course, he said, he often he used to fall asleep reading them. No, no disrespect to even Alistair McLean or uh, Hammond Innes. But nonetheless, um, novels that almost put you to sleep. Charles, that's what you should be reading tonight, I think. Anyway, see you tomorrow.